All right, part three, the last part about um, financial stuff. Um, what about working as a university student? Um, uh, a couple of things. I mean, for one thing, our cultures are very different on this topic. So, American culture. Uh, you work part-time or full-time. It's not expected, and you don't have to. A lot of students don't work, but it's very, very common, and there are a lot of online jobs. The philosophy is that you're then invested in your education. Um, even rich families will make their kids work while they're in school and pay a portion of it, um, or at least pay for their own spending money. Um, you learn important skills, responsibility, um, uh, time management, all kinds of things. Uh, you don't have to rely on your parents. Some, this was me. I worked while I was in college because I didn't want to rely on my parents. I wanted, excuse me, I wanted to do things on my own. I wanted to be independent. Um, we take pride in working for my, ourselves. My parents did not give me any money for college. And as an American, I'm very proud of that. I'm very aware of, I live in the Philippines, right? Um, Filipinos take no pride in uh, paying for their college themselves, but I did. I worked um, 20 to 30 hours a week, all six years I was in college. I was two years at a state university and then I transferred to a, a four-year Bible college and it took me four more years because it was really expensive and I had to work way more than anyone else. So. Um, yeah, so uh, as an American, I'm very proud of that. I, I, my parents didn't pay for my college at all. Other cultures, people would be ashamed um, to say that sort of thing. Um, so uh, the Philippines, Philippine college students don't work, okay? I mean, sometimes they work, but the goal is to not work. Um, that's what parents are for. It might even be shameful if a family can't support their children in university. You know, your son has to work, you know, what, you know, dun, dun, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. A sponsor is an acceptable alternative for poorer families in our Bible college in Baguio. I, I overheard a conversation where the students were talking about their sponsors and kind of boasting about their sponsors. Well, my sponsor pays my tuition and fees. Well, my sponsor pays my tuition and fees and gives me an allowance. Ooh, you have an allowance? Well, I have to work on campus for my spending money, you know, and just comparing their sponsors. Um, but, but the goal in the Philippines is that you don't work. That's what your family is for, okay? And it allows you to focus on your studies. And in all fairness, uh, the educational systems are different, but in the U.S., um, 12 to 18 units is a full-time load. In the Philippines, it's more like 24 to 27 units. Um, so they're in class a lot more. Um, what about Korea? Everyone works for extra money. Everyone works. College students work in Korea. Everyone also gets money from their parents. Like you will rarely find you will rarely find a student who doesn't work, and you'll rarely find a student who doesn't get something from their parents. Um, this is pretty uh, common, taking a gap year and working full-time for your specs, right, to make your resume look good. You've got some full-time work experience already. Um, there are plenty of on-campus and off-campus jobs available for you uh, to work. What about, I did a little research, what about in India? You don't work, college students don't work. I mean, they sometimes do, but the goal is to not. That's what parents are for. We are alive now, why do you need to work? We're your parents, we're here, that's why you have parents. Just focus on your studies, don't worry about money. Um, some families fear that their status will be affected if their children work during college. What will the neighbors think? You know, that sort of thing. Um, People will criticize us as parents if we make our our children work while they're in university. Um, Canada, a couple of you going to Canada. 50% of, of college students work in Canada. Um, it's very common. Um, lots of on-campus, lots of off-campus jobs. In Toronto, where, where I think a couple of you are going, is a huge city, tons of jobs there. Um, but basically, if you need money, you need to work. Is that all I have for Canada? Sorry. Uh, Australia. 
uh, many students work, but only 45% of Australian students finish their college degree in four years. Okay, um, and in fact, most students live with their parents while they go to university. You have to remember, Australia is huge. Australia is the size of the United the United States, but like 90% of the population live in seven cities. Okay, so it's a very urban, even though it's the whole big outback and all of that, uh, Australian society is very urban. Okay, so you don't you don't travel um, to go to college. Um, you stay home, you live at home and, and it's very common for Australians to live at home in all through their twenties into their thirties. Um, so when they work, um, it's for spending money, uh, maybe more than their parents are giving them. I just want a little bit more. Um, but Australians are also pretty good at saving for the future. And what else do I have? Ah, China. Uh, very few students work in China. Only the poorest of students will work uh, because there's no time. Competition to get into a master's degree is high and academics take a lot of time. Even in their summer breaks, they won't, they won't work, but they'll use that time to study to get ahead because the competition is so high to get into good universities, to get into good master's programs, to get good jobs. Um, Chinese companies value education more than work experience. So um, if you come from an inferior uh, graduate school, but you have a ton of work experience, and that guy over there has zero work experience but came from a better graduate school, they'll take the one with the better graduate degree. And so, you know, that's just kind of the way it goes. Wow, what else do I have here? Ah, oh, the Netherlands. Nina, I, I looked at your country. Uh, about two-thirds of Dutch students work while they're in university. Working for money takes time away from studying, though, which you're paying money for. So some see it as kind of um, like, like it's, it's a paradox, right? You're paying money to go to school, but then because you're working, you can't do your schoolwork. And so why should you work when you can't do your schoolwork, which you're paying money for to get, you know, and so... Um, there's a bit of that going on, but unless your parents are rich or you lucked out with scholarship, student life in the Netherlands means studying and working for money. So you'll probably have a part-time job, Nina, when you're in college and anyone else who goes to the Netherlands for university. Okay, so international students in the U.S. This is just some advice. Get a social security number um, immediately, okay? Um, every American citizen has a social security number. It's our, it's our s citizen ID number, like your, uh, whatever, your national ID number in Korea. It's the same thing. Okay. Um, but you can't have a job without it. Okay. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, it's just best to have one. Even as a student on a student visa, you can work in the U S but you can only work on campus in the United States. If you're an international student in the United States and you're here on a student visa, you can only work on campus, okay? Your university can help you get a social security number, but you're gonna need your birth certificate and your passport. You have to prove how old you are and you have to prove your identity, okay? So uh, wherever you're going to college, be sure you take your birth certificate with you. If you uh, were born in the Philippines and you're going abroad, go down to the uh, they changed the name. It used to be the the NSO, National Statistics Office, but now it's called something else. Um, but whatever that is, go down and get like, they're cheap. Get like 10 copies of your birth certificate and you'll have them the rest of your life, okay? Uh, but you'll definitely need them when you're in college. Uh, international students in the U.S., you can only work on campus and... And on-campus jobs are almost always minimum wage, okay? Unless it's something skilled like you're, you're tutoring or, you know, you're a computer technician or something like that. If you're an um, upper-level student, you can sometimes work for more than minimum wage. But, um, I mean, minimum wage in the U.S. is like $15 an hour. So if you work, you know, 20 hours a week, you can make like $300 a week. I think I added that up right. Um, and, you know, that's a bit of money, even, even part-time work, okay? Um, 
But if your roommate works at a restaurant in town and he's making four or five hundred dollars a week and working fewer hours, uh, you're you're going to be dissatisfied with your minimum wage, um, and your hours may be limited. Um, especially at a big, so Jaden's at Grand Canyon University. There are 22,000 students there and 17,000 of them live on campus. And, um, the, the neighborhood around Grand Canyon isn't the greatest. And so students want to work on campus. They don't want to go off campus to work, um, as much as possible. And so the on-campus jobs are, uh, hard to get. And even if they get them, you know, maybe they only need five employees to work 20 hours each, but they're going to hire 10 and give you 10 hours each. You know what I mean? Um, uh, so if you do work, um, don't let it interfere with your studies. Okay. Um, so, uh, there's, there's a philosophy here. Your grades at the end of the semester don't just reflect how well you did in class. Um, they also reflect how well you balanced your life. Remember this? Um, sorry, I'm, my, I'm pushing buttons on my phone and I don't want to. Right? Finding this balance. And once you throw work in there, that affects everything else. Okay? If you have this simple life and you just have the three circles in the middle, uh, good for you. But if you've got work and if you're also serving in a local church or doing something else for the Lord, um, you've got a lot of balancing to do when you're in university. Okay, in the U.S., um, as far as working, like like getting jobs and maybe non-traditional jobs, yes, you can get a job washing dishes in the cafeteria, uh, but nobody wants that job. That's like the last job um, on everybody's list because, um, I don't know, I never did that, but it sounds miserable. You can tutor English in the U.S. There are, every, every university has international students, and a lot of them struggle with their English. And so you can get $10 to $20 an hour. Um, you're, you're unskilled, you're inexperienced. You can actually get more than that per hour um, if, you're, like if you're licensed or something like that. Okay? Um, you can make money proofreading papers. Um, you can just make yourself known. You, you put up posters around campus. Hey, I'll proofread your papers. And again, you know, if there's an international dorm or if there's an international club, and you know what? Um, as TCKs, depending on how TCK you are, um, I would really recommend that you uh, contact your university and ask them to participate in the international student orientation, which usually happens a week before the regular freshman orientation. So you get to school a week before all the other freshmen. You meet all the other international students. And in all honesty, I mean, it depends on who you are. It depends on how long you've been at the, in the Philippines. Um, but if you are, if you have strong TCK characteristics, if you've been in the Philippines your whole life um, or half your life or something like that, you may find that you have more in common with the international students than with the American-American, Korean-Korean, Filipino-Filipino students. And um, it never hurts to ask. Most, most universities, when you explain your situation, will allow you to, to attend the international student orientation. You make friends there and be like, hey guys, uh, let me know if you want me to proofread your papers. Um, my fee is five, $5 per page. Five dollars per page. I'll proofread your papers. Okay, and and here's another thing, you guys. If you make yourself available for a fee, then you don't have people coming up and saying, "Hey, can you do this?" Like as a favor, because if you know the international students and they know that your English is pretty good, they're going to ask you for a favor. Hey, could you proofread my paper for me? Okay, but if you've already let everyone know, "Hey, I'll proofread your papers." I you know, I, I need to work while I'm in college, and, and this is one of the ways I decided I'm going to work. So then if they come and say, hey, can you proofread my paper? Yeah, you know, it's it's $5 a page. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, and you can make a bit of money. It used to be that you could make money typing students' papers, but, like, that's not a thing anymore. Uh, if you can work in fine dining, I'm just going to make a plug for fine dining. When I 
Um, I worked in bookstores when I was um, like in high school and first in college. And then I just kind of fell into a job in a fine dining restaurant. I worked in a French restaurant and, um, and it was great because we made good tips um, back, back in that day. So this is like the late 80s. It was the average price for a meal in our restaurant was $75 per person. So a party of two would average about 150, and, and that was actually about, that was kind of on the low end. Um, party of two would usually spend more than $200, um, and you get 20% as a tip. Um, and like we pooled our tips, and, and it was a little bit complicated, but um, on, a, on a weeknight, it was not a busy restaurant. It was not a difficult job. Um, on a weeknight, I would make uh, 50 to $80 in tips um, in addition to being paid. So I was earning an hourly wage for being there, but I was also getting these tips. And on a busy Friday or Saturday night, we would make 120 to $180 um, in tips. And, you know, if you can get into that, that's a great way to to make a lot of money but not work very many hours so like i would go in and our basic shift was five to nine okay so so the bulk of the, some would come at 4 30 and might leave at 8 30 some would come at, at 5 30 and would cl every once in a while you had to close and when you had to close you close a restaurant you're there till one in the morning okay um, some, we, my college didn't have a curfew, but some of you might have to get permission to come back that late if your college has a, has a curfew. Um, but like I, I would work 20 hours and make twice as much money as my friends working 30 hours, like at the grocery store or, or on campus or something like that. Okay. Um, so I say a hundred dollars an hour because like if I worked a, a five hour shift, and I made $180 in, you know, in uh, tips, and and I got my hourly wage on top of that. Like it, it added up. One time, a guy gave us a $2,500 tip. That's a that's a good story. But I, I want to get you guys out of this um, sooner than that. Babysitting. Uh, Ten to twenty dollars an hour is standard in the United States right now. It depends on your state. It depends on how many kids. Depends on you and maybe your relationship with the family, um, but babysitting is a great thing. Unfortunately, they usually don't want a guy babysitter. They're always looking for girls. Babysitters and nannies. Nobody looks for men. Um, so, young women babysitting, uh, you can make you can make a bit of money. Like your professors and and uh, you know staff or whatever church members. Um, another good reason to be involved in a local church, like actively involved and get to know people at the local church. They'll invite you over for dinner. They'll, they'll, um, you know, they'll, they'll help you if you need help. Maybe somebody in the church is a mechanic, you know, to help with your car. Um, that, that was my, that was my experience. When I was in Bible college, one of the members of my home church was a mechanic. And whenever my car was having problems, uh, Dennis, Dennis Lambert. He would take care of my car for me. Um, but babysitting, you can make yourself known as a babysitter. Hey, I just wanted to let you guys know that if anyone ever needs a babysitter, I'm available. Um, what else do I have here? Try to get a job that complements your study. Sorry, I should have indented this. I forgot my face was going to be there. For example, work on campus for a researcher with a grant, a teaching assistant, a grader, a tutor, a paid internship. So if you're an English major, try to get a job when you're a junior or a senior, try to get a job in the um, tutoring center, in the, in the, the what's it called? It's called, uh, there's something, universities in the U.S. all have a writing center, I think they usually call it. They didn't have them when I was a student, but um, it's a writing center. It's upper division uh, English majors. And you can go there and get help um, writing your papers, get help with proofreading and all kinds of stuff like that. And if you're going to be in, if you're an English major, if you're going to be an editor or something like that, you know, that complements your job. If you're going to be, 
you know, in medicine or something like that, and, you know, talk to your microbiology professor who's doing research on campus and say, hey, do you need any help? You know, these guys, they get grant money for their research and stuff like that at bigger universities. And, you know, they hire people and, you know, I, I don't know what you could do. Be an entrepreneur. Uh, this is from my own experience. This isn't a picture of my refrigerator, but um, uh, there was a uh, there was a local supermarket nearby um, when I was in college, and you probably have never heard of this, but there was a thing called Cherry Seven Up. Maybe they still have it. It comes and goes. Cherry Seven Up, um, and there was also Diet Cherry Seven Up. Um, which was all right. It was nothing special. Um, so this local supermarket, like, like they ordered too much of it. And, and my friend and my roommate Floyd and I, we walked into this store and they had a five foot high stack of cases, two cases per stack. And I don't remember. So 12, so 24 times five cans of diet cherry seven up and we had a little refrigerator like this we bought all five of those um and we just put them they were they were on sale so it was like it was like 88 cents a case or something ridiculously low like that and so we sold it for uh i think we sold it for 50 cents a can and down in the lobby the vending machine was a dollar a can and so you know guys would come up if they just wanted a soda or something like that. Now, we were all sick to death of Diet Cherry 7-Up by the end, um, but we made quite a bit of money. We, we made a lot of profit on that, but if you can get a refrigerator and everybody just knows, hey, you know, Steve has drinks in his refrigerator and you put a jar there, I don't know, this works in America, right? Um, people people pay. If you put a jar there, they're going to put money in there. And so you might buy that can of Coke in the store for 40 cents, but you're going to sell it for a dollar. Sodas, one dollar. Stick your money in here, you know? And, uh, you know, like the refrigerator in the staff lounge, stuff like that. You can put sodas, you can put candy bars, you know, whatever you want. Put it in there. People will, people are, you're like a vending machine, you know? Mark it up. 100 to 800 um, percent and make some money. Um, this was not from my experience, but I had this idea that um, you could make coffee, sell coffee to people in the morning. Now, I don't know, um, your generation, so many of you are like coffee snobs. I only drink Starbucks or something like that. But I found a coffee maker like that, just like that, a 30 cup coffee maker at a garage sale, like a yard sale, for, I think I paid $5 for it, okay? And you buy coffee, I don't have, like, the actual coffee grounds in my equation here, but you, you make a pot of coffee in the morning, you learn how many people want to buy it, you know, maybe you could put a little table out in front of your dorm room front door or something, I don't know. Um, at least do it until someone tells you you can't. Put some cream and sugar there, um, and a jar, with, you know, for them to put their payment and just be like, hey, a dollar a cup. You know how much it costs to, to brew a cup of coffee? It's like, it, it's, well, I just showed you earlier in, in the thing, didn't I? It's cheap. It's cheap to make your own coffee. You charge a dollar a, a month. You know, there's no, there's no cups here, right? Styrofoam's like a villain now. So, like, bring your own mug. Bring your own mug. I have cream. I have sugar. I have coffee. One dollar. Fill your mug. This size mug. Eight ounce mug. You know, you bring one of these mugs, pay triple. Um, but, you know, you can make some money uh, just selling coffee. And, and this is passive. Uh, this isn't exactly passive income. I have a thing about passive income. Is it next? Oh, I do. Oh, and I don't. Okay. So there's a header here <laughs> called passive income. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I Googled it a bit. Like, like what's passive income these days? All right. Um, so there's, uh, Udemy. So apparently, and I looked some of these things up. I, I found this, this, uh, website, um, if you want to go there and find it. Um, Udemy is like online classes. People who know something about something make a class. 
And if somebody watches your class, you know, if somebody says, hey, here's a class on how to write a short story. Here's a class on how to, you know, um, uh, take good pictures with your cell phone, you know, whatever it is. Um, you can put a class up there, post a class, and if somebody watches it, you get a little money, okay? So there's, there's some front end work to do. You gotta, you gotta make the stuff and post it, but once it's there, somebody watches it, you make money. Um, you can monetize your blog if you're, if you're a good writer. Uh, people like to read about things, you know? Um, your TCK-ness could really be an advantage in this because there's not a lot of writing going on with TCKs right now. In fact, a lot of the stuff that I use in my class, well, not a lot, but several articles and things are by a lady named Michelle Phoenix. And she was a missionary kid. She worked at Black Forest Academy. She has a blog. And if you go to her blog, like she's clearly making money with this blog, writing about TCK issues. If you're like the TCK, TCK, going to college. Um, uh, Filipina, going to university in Toronto, you know? And maybe somebody looks that up and, and you know, like uh, Emily in Paris, you know? Maybe you just start to get people that are that are interested in that. I mean, obviously you have to be a decent writer, um, but if you are, you can make money on a blog. Uh, you can monetize a YouTube channel, how-to channel, you know, just make a channel that's like, hey, you know, and, and you, you should like, like, uh, specialize in something, you know, uh, like, I don't know, little crafty things or video game, how to, how to do something in a video game or how to, you know, little tricks on your cell phone. Um, I have a, I have a YouTube page. It's not monetized. Um. One of my, I made this video years and years ago, how to eat a fresh coconut. And I mean, if you look at, if you, if you Google how to, how to eat a fresh coconut, there's a good chance you'll see my video because it has like a hundred thousand views or something like that. But you're going to see, I made this thing in like the early nineties. Um, like, like the resolution is so low on these videos. You can barely even see it now, but, um, but yeah, I mean, if you can, if you can do something like that, living in the Philippines, YouTube channel, because, um, I mean, just, just getting ready for this, right? Getting ready for, for, for teaching this and, and keeping current and getting ideas about investments and stuff like that. I'm Googling stuff. Okay. And, uh, and if you have a, a YouTube video that explains something like that, you know, you can make some money. Uh, you can sell stock photographs, stock music, stock videos. I don't know if you know this, but little um, video clips that people use, like in slideshows like this, photographs that people use. You know, when you go to find a, a photograph and it's like Alami or something like that, I've actually purchased photographs before. Um, I have say, citations, just so you guys know, I have citations for all these photographs that, that I'm using. Um, but... Uh, you know, if you're using it for something like this and you're not making money from it, you're not publishing it, you can use it as long as you cite it. Um, but you can actually sell photographs. And, and again, you want to specialize. So you're going to be a college student, specialize in college life. And, and, and you tag the photo with all these things, you know. But like when I'm, when I'm doing a slideshow on like depression and I'm going to Google depressed college student, you know. And if you, you know, you can take decent photos with a cell phone, post them on these uh, stock photograph websites. And if somebody buys a photo, you get like half, I think, of whatever they buy. So if it's a dollar a photo, you get 50 cents. Okay. So, I mean, that's not a lot, but if you have a thousand photos there and you sell, you know, some, I, I don't know. Anyway, it's possible. Uh, background music, generic background music. If you can play like a keyboard or strum a guitar and just kind of make up, you know, whatever, something, don't violate any copyright laws. But if you have just like generic background music, um, you can, you can put that on a, on these websites where you sell stock background music. Okay. Uh, social media. I know you guys probably know more about me 
in how you can make money from social media. But like, if you, when I was looking at ideas for this, um, I saw an ebook called "How to Make a Thousand Dollars from a Thousand Followers on Instagram." Okay, so you get sponsorships, you wear their T-shirt or whatever, um, and uh, and you can make money that way or um, ads. Do they do ads? I can't. I can't remember. Anyway, I, I know you can make money. Like I said, you guys know more than me about making money on Instagram. I assume, and so I didn't do a lot of research on that. But I know that you can. But you have to have a lot of followers, right? You got to get up around a thousand followers, which means you have to be unique. You have to be interesting. Um, but like, if if you can, like, go for it. There it is. Okay, um, English tutoring in Korea, and then I think we're done. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this because um, it's a great, uh, you uh, Filipinos, Indians, Koreans, Europeans, um, your skill in English is always going to be a strength, a benefit to, your, to you. So in Korea, um, standard rate for a part-time job is... 8590 per hour. So you're working at GS25, you're working at 7-Eleven, whatever. Okay, you're working on campus, you're going to make 8590 per hour. Okay, the standard rate for tutoring English is 25,000 won per hour. Okay, um, that's, that's the like beginning rate. Uh, it goes up from there. Now, it's not as straightforward as you think because um, you have to find your own students. And if you think about it, working 15 hours per week at GS25 is better than having two students a week tutoring as far as just the amount of money that you get. Okay, So you have to balance that. If you can, if you can get 10 or 15 students, or even better if you can teach them in groups so that you have more students, but and they pay you a little bit less if it's not one-on-one, -on -one, but if you can get like five students um, all together, then you can you can make a bit more money with fewer hours invested. Okay. Um, oh shoot. I, meh. Twelve percent. Okay. We're gonna go fast. Faster than this. Um, okay. So the pay is different depending on what university you attend, what year you're in, and how old the students student is. So if you're a senior, you get paid more than a freshman. Um, if you're tutoring a middle school student, you're going to make more than tutoring an elementary student. And a Yonsei student will earn more than a Kyunghee student. Okay, it depends on your college, it depends on your year, it depends on the age of the student. Okay, and you negotiate all of that with the mother. Okay, um, and every single Korean that I asked about this gave this advice. Don't teach church members, kids. Um, they either won't pay you. They said they'll have this attitude like, hey, I, I give my offering in the church and the church supports your parents, so you owe this to me. You should do this for free. Um, something like that. So so don't do that. Um, as far as like TESOL certification or teaching TOEFL or something like that, um, everybody says it's really not worth it because the expectations of you are so much higher and you're really not skilled. So really what you need to do is make contacts, okay? Contacts um, just here and there, your parents, friends, or whatever, um, your, your classmates, younger siblings, whatever it may be, you make those contacts and you go. Um, one, one faith grad, I won't tell you who because she asked me not to, was making 80,000 won per hour, but she said in reality the mother, the, the mother usually made her stick around for an hour and a half, but still 80,000 won for an hour and a half um, once a week she was doing that. So if you can, if you can figure something like that out, then, then that's obviously really good. But you guys be creative. You don't have to get a traditional job like flipping burgers or something like, you know, uh, washing dishes in the cafeteria if you will be a little bit creative, okay? Um, and and take advantage of the the world, you know? If you start 
some kind of passive income when you're in college, I mean, that's going to continue into your adulthood, right? Um, just find your niche and, and make use of it. Okay, I'm going to end this because this is a lot of videos this week. Um, if you made it through all of them, I appreciate it. Next week is, an, is a light week. Um, so, <laughs> oh, there it was. Next week was a light week. It is a light week because it's Easter at the end of the week. And so um, in exchange for a lot of work this week, I have something very simple for you to do next week. It'll take you a little bit of time, but it's, it's not a difficult thing. Okay, so take care and I will see you soon.